When I think of the most popular flagship phones of 2022, three phones that immediately come to mind are the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and the Pixel 7 Pro. These are the best phones that Apple, Samsung, and Google have to offer. So let's talk about the good and the bad. We'll look at the camera systems, the displays, the design, battery life, and a lot more. And once and for all, figure out who is the flagship king of 2022. And of course, as newer models come out in 2023, I'll publish updates. Now, starting out with the design, we're getting three unique approaches which have different implications on aesthetics, ergonomics, and durability. The iPhone and the Pixel both have rounded corners, whereas the Galaxy has sharper pointed corners. I don't really find that this matters much to me when I'm using the phone in portrait mode because the corner isn't hitting my hand, but when I'm gaming or using the phone in landscape mode, I end up pressing into the phone with both hands and the iPhone and the Pixel are more comfortable to me. Now the iPhone has squared off edges versus the Pixel and the Galaxy which have rounded edges. And for me, when I'm using the phone with the one hand, the iPhone edges feel sharper and are much less comfortable, especially since all three phones are on the larger size and I need to make sure that they don't slip out of my hand. We're also seeing very different designs when it comes to the camera module. The Pixel 7 Pro uses a visor approach where the lenses are flush with the visor itself. The S22 Ultra lenses extend a bit from the body and then the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a camera bump and then on top of that, it's got the largest lenses. Now, aesthetics aside, the Pixel is the only one that lays flat and it doesn't wobble when you press on it. Now, the Galaxy wobbles a little bit, especially when you're pressing on the bottom right of the display. And then the iPhone has by far the most wobble, like pretty much anytime you press anywhere on the left side of the phone or on the bottom right. Now the Pro Max and the S22 Ultra have a matte finish on the back versus a glossy finish on the Pixel 7 Pro. Personally, I like how a matte finish looks and it's also much less susceptible to fingerprints. And speaking of fingerprints, the iPhone sides are shiny stainless steel, which looks incredible until you touch your phone. It will absolutely and immediately show fingerprints versus the aluminum sides on the Pixel and S22 Ultra, which pretty much don't show any fingerprints at all. Now, let me just say that personally, fingerprints on the side or the back of a device don't really bother me, but if that's going to annoy you, then the S22 Ultra gives you the best combination of a matte back and fingerprint resistant sides. Now, when it comes to usability, the iPhone splits the power and volume buttons into separate sides, whereas the Pixel and the Galaxy have them both on the same side. Now, personally, I like having them on opposite sides because I don't get confused, but I also switch between phones all the time, so I'm much more likely to get confused. And for the average user, this may not matter as much. And I'm way more likely to accidentally take a screenshot on the iPhone by pressing the volume up and the power button at the same time when I'm just trying to turn the phone off. Now, another feature that I like about the iPhone is having a physical mute button. So I can easily switch modes without having to interact with the OS. Now, continuing to look around the edges, the Galaxy and the Pixel have a SIM card tray. And since I have the US version of the iPhone, I only have an eSIM option. Switching from an older iPhone to this one was super easy and it only took me about a minute, but then going from a physical SIM card on a previous Android phone to eSIM on an iPhone did require me to call my carrier. So while I like the ease of use of eSIM and there are plenty of eSIM providers when I travel abroad, if you prefer a physical SIM card and you live in the US, then the Galaxy and the Pixel are a better option. But what about the displays? Now, this is an area where each phone has its strengths and weaknesses. There are slight variations in terms of resolution and pixel density, with the Galaxy and the Pixel being slightly ahead of the iPhone. Now, all three displays offer an adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 hertz, so we're getting very smooth animation and scrolling on all three devices. In terms of brightness, the iPhone has the highest maximum brightness, followed by the Galaxy and then the Pixel. Now, practically speaking, the iPhone is a little easier easier to see and bright daylight. It's also the most color accurate of the three, but the Galaxy and the Pixel have a more vibrant and colorful color profile right out of the box. I've had a chance to use all three phones since the day they were released. And my favorite display, especially for watching movies and HDR content, is the S22 Ultra. The image is super crisp and vivid, and it's something that I noticed every time that I switch back to it. Now, the Pixel still has a very nice display, but in this area, it comes in third, 
at least until we talk about the front-facing camera module. So this year, Apple introduced Dynamic Island, which combines software with two smaller hardware elements to create a useful, animated, and interactive user experience. Now, I absolutely love having quick access to media control and to other aspects of background apps, but when you're viewing content or playing games, even in its closed form, Dynamic Island is more disruptive to the viewing experience. Now, both the Pixel 7 Pro and the S22 Ultra have a hole punch for the camera module, and the Galaxy comes out ahead with a slightly smaller implementation. Now, of course, the iPhone uses its larger camera module for Face ID, which is more secure than Face Unlock on the Pixel or Face Recognition on the Galaxy. But Google and Samsung instead chose to go with an in-display fingerprint sensor optical for the Pixel and ultrasonic for the S22 Ultra. I haven't noticed a night and day difference between the two sensors, but the one on the Galaxy is slightly faster and a little bit more accurate than the one on the Pixel. For most of what I do, I prefer Face ID because it's the most accurate and it requires no action on my part. In terms of shape, the flat display on the iPhone gives a more even look to the image, whereas the curved edges on the Pixel and the Galaxy create a bit of a drop shadow effect on the sides. The curved display can also impact durability, so let's look at how these phones rank. Now, as far as the frame, the stainless steel on the iPhone should give it an edge over the aluminum frames on the Pixel and the Galaxy. The iPhone also has better water resistance, but it's a bit heavier. The curved edges on the Pixel and the Galaxy also mean that you're more likely to drop the phone and hit the glass instead of the frame. Now, in terms of the glass itself, the Pixel uses Gorilla Glass. Victus, the Galaxy uses a stronger Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, and then the iPhone uses Ceramic Shield, which they claim is the strongest glass on any mobile phone. But the reality is that if you drop your phone face down on the sidewalk or even on the corner, it's going to crack unless you get super lucky. And if this is not the first time that you're watching one of my phone reviews, you know that I drop my phones a lot, and that's why I always use a case. Now, this year, Casetify sent over a few cases and a couple of accessories accessories that add a ton of protection. So right now I'm using the clear case, which I love because I still get to see this purple color of my iPhone. And there are a couple of things that make for a good clear case. So first of all, Casetify uses a medical grade PC material. So you're starting out with a super clear case. Next, they use their UV Defender technology to block UV rays and that helps the case stay clear. Now you're also gonna want good protection and these clear cases exceed military grade standards so they can withstand up to 26 drops. The cases have raised edges and a camera ring to help prevent scratches and we're getting 6.6 .6 foot drop protection. The design is also super slim so we're not adding a ton of bulk and it has really good grip and even tactile buttons. If you're environmentally conscious, you'll be happy to know that these cases are made of 65% percent recycled and plant-based materials. So if you want peace of mind knowing that your iPhone 14 is safe, go to casetify.com slash talk. You'll automatically get 15% off your purchase. And thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, one other important feature is the always on display, and we're getting two different approaches. Android phones have had this feature for years, but Apple put their own spin on it. So on the iPhone, we're essentially getting a dimmed down version of the lock screen with the time, the date, a variety of widgets, multimedia information, and with an iOS update, you can enable or disable notifications and the background image. Now, the Pixel and the Galaxy use a more minimalistic design, which some user prefer. There's also some feedback that the background image on the iPhone makes it appear as if you left your phone on. Another noticeable difference is brightness, where the iPhone always on display is definitely the brightest, some say too bright, the Galaxy is in the middle, and then the Pixel is the dimmest. When we look at performance, it's important to separate benchmark tests from real life use. So if we're only looking at benchmarks, then the iPhone's A16 Bionic easily outpaces the Galaxy and the Pixel for both single and multi-core performance. It's the most powerful chip on any current phone. So if you're really pushing your phone to the max, which let's be honest, for most of us means you're gaming, the iPhone has the most capable chip. All three phones are able to run any of the games that I play, but to give you an example of a practical difference, only the iPhone can run PUBG at 90 FPS. 
For the overwhelming majority of users, all three phones have more processing power than they need, but I'm still giving the edge to the iPhone because it has additional headroom in terms of performance, and it will continue to perform better for longer. When it comes to multitasking, we can see that processing power doesn't equal performance. And this is where the operating system comes in. And Android has better multitasking features, which allow you to run two apps side by side or one on top of the other. And speaking of operating systems, on the surface, we're getting iOS versus Android. And digging in deeper, we're getting Samsung's One UI 5 versus stock Android 13. So first, iOS is simple to use. It's consistent across different iPhones. It integrates much better with other Apple devices, which is due to Apple's more complete ecosystem. And at the same time, iOS is also much more closed off and it offers significantly less flexibility when it comes to customizing how your iPhone works. This is where Android truly shines and the choice comes down to the super clean stock Android experience on the Pixel, with some pixel specific features such as direct my call, the recorder app, some unique camera and photo features and a few more. And then Samsung's One UI 5, which is one of my favorites of any Android phone. It's super smooth, it's responsive, it offers some great features, especially in the camera app. And even though it does come with some bloatware, it has DeX, which means that you can practically turn your phone into a desktop computer. It's also important that we look at operating system support. Support. Now, both the Pixel and the Galaxy offer five years of security updates, but the Galaxy offers four years of Android updates and the Pixel surprisingly only offers three. In any case, both phones fall short of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which should offer at least six years of operating system and security updates. The one unique productivity advantage of the S22 Ultra is that it comes with an integrated S Pen. Now, just like DeX, it's not a feature that every user needs, but it's the only phone in this comparison that offers it, and it's a very valuable addition for many users. Now, another important consideration is battery life, where the Pixel and the Galaxy have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, versus 4323 on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But this is an area where we see the iPhone with its super efficient A16 Bionic really excel. And I'm getting about nine and a half hours of battery life on the iPhone, eight to eight and a half on the Pixel, and then about seven and a half to eight hours on the S22 Ultra. Now, of course, these are the results of my tests and your actual real world battery life will depend on how you use your phone. And when it comes to wired charging, the iPhone still uses a lightning port versus is USB-C on the Pixel and the Galaxy. And the S22 Ultra comes out ahead with 45 watts fast charging. All three phones can be charged wirelessly, but the Galaxy and the Pixel also offer reverse wireless charging, so you can use them to charge another device. And that brings us to the camera system. Now, I know that most of you are not camera nerds like me, so what I'm gonna do is keep it simple while highlighting some important differences. First of all, we're at a point where you should expect flagship phones to take great pictures when there's plenty of light. And in fact, all three of these phones can create fantastic images. And while there are differences in things like the sensor size, megapixels, aperture, and optical zoom, what might be the most significant difference is how each phone processes the image after it's taken. Starting out with a couple of shots that I took on the beach at Hilton Head, you could see that the iPhone definitely has the highest saturation. The sky and the water are extremely blue. Then in the middle, we see the S22 Ultra, and then the Pixel, which probably shows the most true to life image. The next shot is taken directly into the sun, and it shows you how each phone was able to handle such a challenging exposure. We can also see that the Pixel was best able to retain some details in the shadow. Next, we walked by this super cool tree and I wanted to see how each phone handles the shadows in the foreground. You could see that the iPhone has the most contrast and the image also looks cooler. The Pixel brightened the tree and the ground a little bit more and it also warmed up the image. It also seems to have a slight magenta shift to it. And finally, the Galaxy really did a lot to brighten the shadows. You could really see the amount of processing that went into it and it almost looks like there's another light source in the front. The next photo shows more of the same. Again, the iPhone is more contrasty while the Pixel and the Galaxy 
bring out more details in the shadows. And also take a look at how each phone blurs the background. The next shot I captured during a round of golf, and I'm happy to say that I didn't hit the shot into the water. And again, take a look at how each phone handles the sky, especially in terms of dynamic range and how the shadows are processed. In this particular shot, it looks like the S22 Ultra created the most saturated image. The next one is a night shot from Las Vegas when I went to CES. Take a look at how the sky is rendered, the color of the building, and how each camera handled the smaller details. Now let's take a look at some winter shots, and I want you to pay attention to how each phone handles white balance. Now you can see that the iPhone produces a much cooler image. The Pixel is quite warm, it almost looks like sepia, and then the Galaxy is probably the most true to real life. Now here's another example, but with the subject much closer to the camera, so you can see how that impacts exposure and background blur. Now here's an image with some more contrast, and we can see that the white balance still follows the same pattern, and the S22 Ultra continues to bring out the most details and color in the shadows. And finally, I wanted to do a quick video test in the snow. The iPhone is super sharp and again, cool. The Pixel, once again, is warmer, and the Galaxy looks a little gray to me, maybe because it was trying not to overexpose the snow and maintain as much of the detail as possible. And if you want to see even more comparisons side by side, Watch these two comparisons when you're done with this one. Now, as far as the camera apps themselves, the iPhone has the most basic app, but it's also the most reliable and responsive. The Galaxy has the most powerful features with pro camera, pro video, and director's view, while at the same time, it has much better zoom capabilities with 3 and 10x optical zoom cameras. For macro shots, the iPhone was able to get the closest, but the Pixel did a really good job at processing the image close up, as did the Galaxy, even though it's not as magnified. So now comes the question, which phone is the winner? And we definitely need to take a look at price. So in the US, the iPhone 14 Pro Max starts out at $1099, the S22 Ultra at 1199 and the Pixel 7 Pro at $899. It's also important to mention that you can pretty regularly get really good deals and discounts on the Galaxy and the Pixel, whereas the iPhone price tends to stay the same. Also, if you live outside of the US, let me know in the comments section where you're from and what these three phones cost where you live because I know that the prices are insanely different. So overall, the Pixel 7 Pro comes in at a much lower price. And for what you're getting, I have to admit that it's the best value on this list. If you're willing to give up on a couple of features, it's also worth looking at the Pixel 7, which sells for $599. It might be the best value phone on the market. Now, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has the most powerful processor, it has an easy to use operating system with the longest support, has the best battery life, the brightest display, and it's absolutely the best option if you're in the Apple ecosystem. Now, in terms of the best overall phone, when you look at the ergonomics, the impressive display, the elegant yet customizable operating system, the integrated S Pen, the versatility of DeX, the impressive camera system, and the powerful camera app, it's really hard to pass on the S22 Ultra. Now you should check out this comparison. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.